Good afternoon to all the participants present for the second session of the final day of ICT Blani 2. Today, our session is on semantics, the second part of semantics from ICT Blani 2, and it will be chaired by Dr. Krishna Boro from Guwahati University. So now the session is going to be chaired by Krishna. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and I welcome all the participants to this session. Uh, this session has uh, five presentations at this point, but there is a possibility that we may have a sixth presenter. Uh, so we'll, we'll know this later. So our uh, first presenters are Anand Singh and uh, Lystrom uh, Vizen Kumar Singh. Uh, second, uh, presenter is Kim Neilam Kim Nihauke. Third presenter, uh, Surmongal Sharma. Fourth presenter, Omila Kapchintam Kapchintabam. And the fifth presenter is Deimalu Brahma. Uh, the presentations are for 20 minutes and 10 minutes is for discussion. Okay, so I now request uh, the first presenters, uh, Anand Singh and Laisham Bizen Kumar Singh to present their uh, paper. Okay, uh, thank you, respected chairperson of the session, uh, Dr. Krishna Boro, the organizer and all the uh, friends and colleague participants. A very good afternoon once again. Today uh, with my co-presenter, Dr. Longjam Anand Singh, we are going to present a paper on the semantic challenges of Ka in Manipuri, which will be a case study of what sense is immigration. So let me put my slide in full screen mode. Hope so all can see it in the full screen. So here we go. Yeah, before we go uh, start our presentation on the Ka, I would like to give a brief background of the language. So. Manipuri or the Mithailon, and some people are also called uh, Mithailon as Mithairon. It means uh, in the allomorphic way. So it's the Tibeto-Burman language, which is spoken in the northeast state of India, Manipur, and it's neighboring uh, states like Assam, Tripura, as well as in the neighboring countries of Bangladesh and the Myanmar, which is as well the Burma. And uh, giving an, you know, typological features about the Manipuri or the Mitai loan, it's a tonal language and it is a agglutinative language in nature and it is a above final language. Now, uh, let me give some literature on ambiguity and the what sense this ambiguation. So ambiguity, you know, it means having two or more sense or interpretation. So the construction which it can give more than one meaning or one, uh, one sense is generally um, or known as the ambiguous or the ambiguity. That's, let me, okay, fine now. Yeah, then in all the major languages around the world, you know, we see that there are lots of words which denotes meaning in different contexts. Means a particular word can give different senses in different uh, contexts. And in order to you know, overcome or in order to solve this kind of problem that we have a technique or we have a phenomenon which is we call as the what sense disintegration, which tries to find the exact sense of a particular word in a particular context. This is the, one of the English example that I'm showing here, the word, particular word bank, it can give more than one sense or one meaning, something like finance and institute or the river, you know, riverside as well as reservoir, et cetera. Then, is a continuity of ambiguity and what sense disambiguous. So yes, this is the same thing that I have already uh, you know, uh, read out. Then, for a normal human being, okay, we have an inborn capability or capacity to differentiate the multiple senses of an ambiguous word in a particular context. Maybe this may be two holes for the native speakers as well, but the machine, that when we run to only according to some particular instruction, then it's very difficult to rule out 
in which particular you know uh, context what will be the meaning of a particular sense so this is the one of the uh, key highlight of our today's presentation yeah the objective of our presentation in this paper is the describe is to describe and analyze the different senses of a uh, which is also a root and it can be have sometimes as a word also how many you know um, interpretation or sense or whatever meaning it can give in the different construction in metailon this is our you know one of the uh, uh, sole objective of our presentation and uh, you know one problem not one problem that the discussion or it may be the problem that we had in our uh, let me know. okay in manipuri or metailon is being you know agglutinative and tonal in nature for the particular, you know, uh, this root ta, it's, it's not very easy to understand by the L2 learner, Manipuri as a L2 learner, okay, when we use in different contexts. And surpri surprisingly, uh, ta can give more than 100 meanings, okay, in different constructions in uh, Mithailon or in Manipuri. This, 100 plus meaning that we are claiming here, it may not be, you know, limited to that particular number. If we keep on, you know, uh, doing some more research, then it may come up with more than, you know, uh, what we are claiming as of now. And this uh, paper is, we have just started, means it is in the preliminary stage. So further, there is more scope so that we can improve and we can, um, we can give, uh, come up with different, you know, uh, aspect of the ta. So the meaning of ta is very ambiguous than the lexical ambiguity, which is a fundamental problem in NLP. We all know that. So let me skip the last sentence. It's not so. Okay. Now, coming to the core part of our presentation that ta that we are going to see and analyze, it's different meaning in different construction as in, as a noun. Okay. We are going to discuss noun, uh, ta as a noun at the at, at, at the beginning, and after that, we will try to put it in a verbal noun form, and in an adverbial construction, then it will be an adjectival, uh, adjectival construction. Then again, we'll try to put it in a phrasal or in clausal, and in cultural practices. I think there's a typing mistake, sorry for that. In as in phrasal and clausal, it will be oblique idioms as well. Okay, now, ta as a uh, as, as, as a noun, okay. Uh, ta, which can give the meaning of moon as well as month, when is, you know, compounded with some other noun like Sajibu, Sajibu Ta. So Sajibu is the, actually it's the real month only. So we used to say like Sajibu Ta, which means April month, then Numit Ta Thawan, Numit Ta Thawan. Actually, this is the celestial bodies. If we give the literal meaning, then it is the sun, moon, and the star, respectively. Then, matha, 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 ma is the pronominal marker for third person. So, in this construction, you know, it's, it gives a meaning of his or her left. And again, in this, tha, it can give the meaning of face as well as for the breast. Now, what we are going, uh, what we are showing here is a sample of this type of construction. We have more examples in this way, means ta as a noun in, in, in Manipuri. Then, in another construction, ta as verbal noun, this is one of the, uh, you know, very productive way of word formation as well that I can claim in Manipuri or the Mithailon. And the process here that uh, means, Noun incorporation is one of the very productive part formation that we can, uh, yes, we can do some approaches from that angle also. But for our today's presentation, we are not discussing from the what formation processes, rather we are trying to, you know, give a description of the meaning or the senses that Tha can give in different construction. Here, let's have a look here, that's other Thaba, that, that means to applying powder by you know girls or the ladies. Then koilas thava that is the black topping. Nung thava stone man when we make the roads. Then machu or the rung rung. I think this is not a native word of Manipuri. 
So we can use instead of rang as machu. So machu thava means to bend or thava means to polish shoes. And in the same way, we have more examples means we, we are not showing here as a barbell noun. And the example number 12 and 13, this, uh, this the paradigm of seven to 11, when we look into it, we observe or we found that this action means uh, these are all, it gives a you know meaning of applying something on top of a you know, different surface. In case of applying powder, maybe black topping, maybe stone pavement rot, or the painting or you know placing shoes. But in 12 and 13, the meaning is again it gives a different you know paradigm, like saying the kutaba means those people or those person who works on the poem. And again in number 13, maming taba simply it's to write the name maming taba okay maybe in a piece of paper or in the exam we used to write our name where we used to say it as the maming taba in the same analogy we are continuing in this slide as well that na taba that is you know smashing with a bed or hit by a bed something like that then in na taba then hit by arrow yopi taba kubang na taba na taba Thaba, mukna thaba, and anthaba. Okay, so rest of the meanings like you know, to nail, to slap, to hit, to assault, to win in wrestling. These are the literal meanings. But this anthaba, I'm not sure whether uh, our, uh, the non-native speaker uh, whether they are convinced with my translation. Actually, this is an egg. When we listen to the music, then we also try to uh, follow the music by tapping our hand or by our leg. So that's what we call is the Antava. Yeah. And in this construction of uh, Aba from 22 to 26. So what we observe, uh, sorry that I am not writing what I'm explaining. I'm just showing my example. So. Is some kind of act that uh, that it starts from somewhere and it ends in some 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 other place. Like you know, e tava is to send the information. Okay, to send the information. Then in the same way, number twenty three, tava. It's also display the act of dispatching the documents. Same thing, number 24, Miram the Potava, it's to export goods in some other place. Then number 25, Paisa Tava to send money, Ising Tava to release the water, okay, from the, it may be from a reservoir uh, for the consumption of a uh, household. In that way, we used to say Ising Tava. Again, it is of the same construction as I pointed out at the beginning of my our presentation that is very productive way of formation as well. So when we say, you know, uh, to flag up or to flag up maybe a bus or train, then we use the same word Tava with the, uh, you know, no, with the noun like bus or train like that. Then transfer Tava, transfer Tava, transfer Tava means posting up some official from, a, uh, from his existing uh, place of transfer to another place. Then number 29, Topa Hospital, that Thaba means referring to another hospital. Then the same, in the same way, it can you know, uh, occur with different types of the, uh, categories as well, like Thaba. Thaba means to assign uh, for a particular work. Lanmi Thaba, police Thaba is the deployment of the army or it may be the police. Even though this is also a kind of taba means where uh, the particular uh, root ha that we are discussing in our presentation here, uh, the, this set of meaning is a bit different from the earlier slide that we have discussed so far. Like, you know, when we, uh, let's say when I offer a particular feast, maybe a grand feast, then uh, we used to have our uh, people uh, who Cooks the meal and who will serve the same. Then, when they get ready to serve the meal, you know, uh, in our culture, we used to sit on the floor. Uh, we used to serve the, this uh, this plate, 
then rice and old curry we used to serve one by one so that egg of getting ready for that you know meal is what we call is the chak thaba that is the you know rice and thaba thaba is the egg of doing that you know, getting ready then uh, like chak thaba this is also one of uh, the egg that we used to do uh, when we offer uh, food not actually this is the food it should be the rice uh, to be a god then um thaba um thaba here uh, yes i would like to explain this meaning um thaba to arrange the bed as i give in this way but this is the egg of you know uh, cleaning the bed then putting the mosquito nets in a proper way uh, to get ready for the sleep that arrangement is what we call is the um thaba then machinjak thaba is the you know uh, feeding to feed the birds or the animal maybe pig as well also then mora thaba is a sit mora is a particular noun for uh, stool like uh, you know st uh, structure that we used to made it locally then uh, pi thaba pi thaba again it's uh, it's uh, you know culturally you know uh, oriented uh, word when maybe a marriage or some you know a dead rituals during that rituals what we do is there are certain performers okay who per performs like you know who used to sing when the uh, let's say the person who is responsible for that uh, ceremony they will come out and they will uh, give oaths to the performer so that act is what we call is the ithaba so if all these you know uh, nouns if is not going it's not incorporated with this particular thaba then it's very ambiguous means we cannot identify the exact meaning of thaba so in this way it can give many more meanings and i think we have some more data on that my thaba dukan thaba i think this is the same way that we do uh, you know means my thaba means the, to torch or to fire and to lit the incense stick gari mai thaba is to toast the vehicle balab thaba computer thaba bula thaba program thaba means to broadcast or to transmit the program so this is the same and uh, uh, pattern that we have been observing from the earlier slide yeah this is another meaning that thaba can give in this type of construction this is actually related with the uh, street man or the ill man let's say makokta ising thaba when somebody you know got uh, unconscious then we used to pour or we used to sprinkle you know water on his head so in, in that is what we known as the makok means is the head ising is the water thaba is the you know uh, uh, of pouring then tika thaba tika thaba is the vaccination then then ang thaba thang thaba means is the surgery or the operation Then again, hidak thaba is to prescribe uh, the medicine by a doctor uh, to the patient. And anabudu put kara thare. Anabudu kara thare means out of his you know ailment or the pain, he is getting some hot, some relief. In that situation, also we used to say that anab anabudu kara thare. Then anabudu maibuna put thare. That means uh, patient is in such a condition that. Uh, he or she or the patient is in her we can say at the last stage means the treatment cannot be treatable at all means person is about to die so in that case we used to say that khud thare my bun khud thare then the number 51 that doctor number tam thare that means giving a deadline for a particular uh, ailment or the disease but it may be of you know grave type of uh, diseases like cancer and some other Uh, diseases where uh, they have different stages. In that case, when doctor, when we say, "Oh, ma do doctor na matam thare," means doctor has already given the uh, timeline for uh, him or her. So here, oh, from forty-five to fifty-one, our claim is that even though it is thaba, it has a different construction in a in a very systematic and in a uh, in all and in a very particular context of the. Uh, men and its uh, related terminologies okay i think we have still time then this is also of the i think uh, the 
continuation of the earlier slide. Mang thava means to lit. Then masing thava to include in the count. Lazing thava is a foggy. The thava holiday. Then thava temporary pause in the work process means when we are working. Then what? Uh, let's say let's have a break. In that kind of thing, then we used to say tabak uh, thava. Or if it is uh, that's all for today. In that way, also we used to say tabak thava or tabak thare. Then say no maida thawai thava. Let me try to uh, move fast. We have running out of time. So, to devote to art and music, those per, those people or the person who devoted to the art and music type, then white thava is the uh, dead. Then yeah, uh, thava means uh, using very derogatory or bad words. Thaba, placing a plank for temporary type for a foot breeze. Yes, this is uh, uh, very important and interesting to us as well. When uh, it is very productive in rest of the construction, when it came to adverbial or the uh, adjective construction, it is very rare. As of now, we are able to find out only one uh, construction uh, in this adverb with this ta. So, Tana Thava. Okay. Tana Thava means coating very thickly or thickly coated. And it can be reduplicated as well also. Ta Tana. Ta Tana. Okay. Ta Tana. In that construction also, it's possible. And in adjective as well, this is one of the example as of now we are able to find out. Thava Upak means thick tank. Thava means the thick and tank is the upak. Now, here, this atha, tha, which, which we found as an uh, adjective here, uh, we are not able to, in a position to, you know, establish any other example that we can claim as the adjective. Yes, this is what I was telling. Then a phrase or in the idiom construction, like mamai thava means a sameless person or the beer fest. Mana thava, those who used to take credit of someone's act. Then Mari Thaba means stammer. Yeah, Mari Thaba, the literal meaning is also stammered and we have an idiomatic expression also. When a person is speaking in public then because of some reason or he or she cannot, you know, uh, spell it out properly, then we can say the, oh, Mari Thahore, Mari Thaba Hore. In that way, we used to give as an expression. Then Wakhal Lisan Thaduna means having a, you know, deep uh, thinking or, or meditate, uh, meditate. Loi Thaba is the exile. And number 68 is very interesting, you know, example. And recently only I came to know these things like Sugnu the Loi Thaba. Actually, Sugnu is a name of place in Manipur. Loi Thaba is the exile, to exile, to send for the exile. Then it can give uh, some two meaning as according to my presenter means some in during, it, it, it is in the ancient time in when Manipur was, uh, you know, kingdom. And during those reigns of the king, when the king give a punishment to a uh, criminal that they eh, send him to, uh, you know, Sugnu, means Sugnu the Loi Thakre, if, or Sugnu the Loi Thare, that means he or she has been given the capitan policeman. Uh, either it will be bind with a heavy load in his or her, uh, you know, uh, waist, and it will be thrown, he or she will be thrown to the river. And there is another, you know, uh, narration as well. Person is responsible to perform that act. The wife of that person is known as the Sugnu Hanjabi. Means that Sugnu is the name of the place, and Hanjabi B is the uh, gender marker for female in Manipur. Then Sugnu Hanjabi will come out and see if she has an intention to save the criminal. Then what she will do is she will take out a uh, the woman attire of Maite, what we call is the fanek, the upper one, and she will cover it to that person. That means he or she will be saved from the capital punishment. But there will be no more dignity, no more, you know, that kind of thing in the society. So this number 68, Shugnuda Loitava, it gives a different interpretation. Yes, yes and this is trying to wind up. Okay, yeah, I think I'm almost at the end part. Then this is of the sense of culture and meaning like Nambo Thaba. Yeah, this is also, uh, uh, okay, take the time. okay 29. now this is a kind of marriage, but many of us in our generation don't know what is Nambo Thaba, which we are claiming as a kind of marriage. Okay, this means a person, if he uh, he loves somebody of a noble, uh, you know, noble or gentleman in those days, one, 
they did was they he will go to that uh, person's house and he will work over there and once they means the family recognize him then they will say that yeah you it's uh, time that we should give our hands uh, our daughter's hands to this guy so that kind of marriage was known as the nambo thaba then ipan thaba it's a ritual for newborns then namu thaba this is a part of you know ritual uh, it is a part of our marriage Mary's ceremony, then yelling thaba, then laibora thaba, lukha thaba. Okay, let me come to the conclusion of our presentation. Yes, the meaning of tha is very ambiguous, as I shown in uh, different construction. And at the lexical level, it can give the meaning of moon and month. And in different construction, it can give more than 100 meanings. That is our claim. And because of its different sense in different construction, it is a big challenge for, especially for the Lexicographers, translators, and especially in machine translation, deal with the ta. And as a process of word formation, we have shown there is a non incorporation with the ta is very productive. And a well organized algorithm is need of the hour to make understand the machine for different senses of ta. And it is the context and the incorporated noun that can give us this ambiguous word sense in the language for ta and these are the references for our presentation thank you very much for uh, hearing us thank you Vizen. so we have exactly five minutes left for discussion so i uh, invite any questions suggestions uh, from the participants okay i would like to ask a question yes yes Niranjan, please yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation, Bijan. Uh, the uh, slide where you showed the data uh, number one to four. Okay. Can you just, uh... Let me do that very quickly. One to four. Okay. So there is a diacritic marker on, uh, am I correct? Uh, no, there is no diacritic mark as uh, uh, here. Uh, that uh, above, uh, what is that? Uh, no, no, that is the tone. Um, uh, that, uh, yes, yes, this is diacritic mark for the tone. Yes, yes. Tone yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the, see, it looks like this tha is very different from the subsequent thas that you have. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. I, let, me, uh, let me expand on that, Niranjan. Yes. Uh, the way that I'm, we are marking with a diacritic ma over the a uh, in all our examples, we are claiming that it carries a falling tone or the low tone. And examples that we are unmarked, this carries a level tone. So it's very systematic also. Okay, now you see uh, this example here, one to four, it all carries the low, low tone or the falling tone, like ta, that is the moon or the, uh, you know, a month then sajibutha we never say that sajibutha or sajibutha this is sajibutha then numitha thawan matha itha like that yes hmm. no my point is this tha and the subsequent tha that you have presented it, this is actually there is tha ba right tha ba yes the tha ba yeah so it is part of a, a bigger world we can yes uh, by powder tower itself also uh, it can give the meaning as we are giving like you know applying powder or to apply powder mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you thank you for that okay thank you thank you Nirandan. thank you uh, can i yes Tamu. yes yes Tamu. Uh, yes vision uh, thank you very much this is uh, quite a wonderful paper because yeah. uh, it gives a very confirmative and uh, informative also a very com comprehensive paper. Uh, I would like to really thank to you and my friend Anand yeah, yeah. for, thank such, you, a, for mm -hmm. such a paper, wonderful. Uh, that uh, I feel like uh, some part, uh, somewhere else you have mentioned that Thab Upak, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that case, I think, uh, without the attributive ah. Uh, ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I am on the road. That's why it makes a sound. So, uh, without saying, I mean, just removing ah uh, attributive, ah, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, seems like somewhat, uh, somewhat unnatural. So if you uh, put the Athava Upak, still Tha is there. So it is okay. Or oh, this is a, very, a little bit observation from my side. Anyway, a good paper. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Tamo, for your observation. Yeah, uh, that is the only example that we are able to establish as of now where tha can you know, occur as an eject in the adjective construction. So yes, tha ba upa, as you suggested, uh, it seems to be somehow okay also, but we are not fully convinced when we heard that someone say, you know, tha ba upa, yes. The moment that we put the uh, attributed uh, then it's the full meaning. I think Sri Mangal sir has something to share with us. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, this is, of course, a nice paper. And uh, I would like to have some observations. And uh, uh, maybe my first question would be, do you consider the tha, you have considered added belonging to the same lexical item, or I have, uh, what is your observation? In the lexical level, sir, uh, we are claiming that tha is a noun, definitely, then it can occur in different construction as we saw, like in, uh, uh, you know, nominalized verbal bar, bar, form and with, uh, with executival form, and yes, maximum of them uh, that we have found so far, it's in the uh, nominalized form only, sir. Uh, my, yes. Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, see, uh, the thing is that there are, uh, when you say about the Poilas Thaba, Nung Thaba, right? Yes, sir. Nung Thaba, Poilas Thaba. Uh, then to unload both Thaba, they would have the same tone of Tha. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about uh, to dispatch or to send letters, kind of, right. that is mm -hmm. Tha. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, yes, I yes, sir. Uh, completely uh, yeah. tonal distinctions. One is low tone, another mm -hmm. is high tone. Yeah. Thaba okay. and Thaba. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're actually running out of time here. Uh, may I suggest uh, to have this discussion continue? Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. I will get in touch for uh, what you have suggest suggested. Okay, Krishna, yes. sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I'm sorry I couldn't allow you more time. Um, so let's uh, move on to the next presentation uh, by Kim Neilam Kimi Hauke. Okay, so I invite uh, the next presenter to do that presentation. Good afternoon, everyone present here. Um, Is the screen visible, Hawkeef? Oh, yes, it is visible. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yes, please continue. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, but, uh, I, my I don't know what ha what happened here, but uh, I cannot go go to the go to the uh, this one front front page. It's stuck here. I'm sharing from my end on your behalf. So would you like to go to next slide or? No, we can see your title slide here. Yeah. I think we start from here. Uh, no. Yes, um, yes, 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 it's from here. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the first space. Okay, okay, this is the first space. All right, um, yeah, before, uh, yeah, before I come to the 
uh, topic. Uh, my topic is um, semantic analysis of idioms in Tado for today's presentation. And uh, uh, before I start, I want to give the brief introduction of the language. Uh, Tado is the term given to the tribe and the people uh, who speak the language. The, the people of Thado are settled in different places in the northeastern state, the state of Manipur, and spread across all the hill districts in Manipur. And Thado belongs to northern Kukichin subgroup of tibeto burman family of languages and is widely spoken in northeast India like Manipur, uh, Nagaland, and Assam, and in neighboring countries like Myanmar. And uh, Thado is the la second largest tribe residing in Manipur next to Meite. And according to 2011 census, the total number of Thado population was 2,15,913. Next slide, please. Um, excuse me, Kim Nailam. I think uh, you are also sharing your screen and vision as well. So you, uh, it, if you can stop sharing your screen, then vision can share the screen. And All right. In that case, I can stop sharing if uh, if she can share from her end. Fine. Yeah, in, in her screen, it is coming only uh, the window, not the full screen. So, uh, Bijan, uh, you please share the screen for her. I think you better share from there. Yeah, then please, uh, you please stop sharing. Yeah, Bijan, please share the screen for her. All right. Okay. Um, introduction. Yeah. Introduction before I, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Next one, please. Next. Okay. Next, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, now let's come to the definition of idioms. Uh, idiom is a combination of words or phrases whose meaning cannot be made from its constituent parts. An idiom is a phrase or sentence whose meaning is not clear from the meaning of its individual words and which must be learned as a whole unit. According to McCarthy and Odell, idioms are expression which have a meaning that is not obvious from the individual words. It means meaning of idioms cannot be defined from its little meaning. For example, in Tado, um, uh, thing, Om um, um, agu kimang. Here, the little meaning is bamboo is used when there is no word. The idiotic meaning is different from the literal meaning of the given phrase. It means a person put to use as optional in the absence of a person of priority. It means a person being used as second option. That is, he or she is not the first choice. Um, next, uh, please. Sim uh, now let's come to the symbols of colors and uh, colorful idiomatic expression. Uh, like the belief of different colors associated with various occasions and events to different tribes and communities in the world, Tado people also have the belief that certain colors are associated to their occasions and day-to-day -day events. Uh, colors have positive and negative impacts on the consciousness and subconsciousness of the observer. For instance, uh, warm colors like red, yellow, orange are scientifically proved that they fit one's appetite, while cold ones like blue, purple, and black suppress it. Tado people also particularly use the color black to depict their anger, sadness, and usually they wear black dress in times of mourning of somebody's death to show their sadness, grief, and pain that they share towards the victim's family. Uh, these are the symbolic uh, of colors in the Tado um, uh, uh, in the Tado community, and symbol. Uh, for example, the term muizin niko. Muizin means, uh, uh, if you translate in English, it is Black Day, uh, which is observed by the people as a mark of tribulation for the departed souls. The literal translation of Black Day does not give many meaningful thoughts and ideas. But the idiomatic expression depicts the meaning of sorrow, pain, and anger. From a symbolic perspective, uh, red is associated to love, energy, and action, but it is also a warning to stop uh, and a mark of anger in Western cultures. According to Eastern cultures, it is linked to prosperity and good fortune. 
In Thailand, it represents Sunday, South Africans related with morning. So likewise, the Thado also associate this black with morning. And according to the Christian's belief, red is always associated with sacrifice, sacrificial blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it brings hope to the believers. So red symbolizes hope, sanctification, and sacrifice. So let me give one example of uh, Thado. For example, the idiomatic phrase, Tisan pool. Uh, this is the phrase, uh, the idiomatic phrase. Tisan means uh, red blood. T is red and sun is uh, red and uh, tea is blood pool means uh, boil red blood red boils it means uh, when we translate uh, when we it translate this idiomatic phrase uh, the idiomatic meaning is uh, extreme anger in thado uh, which is uh, that the literal translation in english is uh, um, red blood or blood red boil next please and uh, uh, so uh, let me discuss the types of idioms uh, which are found in Tado. So idioms are classified into four types based on the spectrum of idiomaticity. Uh, those are transparent idioms, semi-transparent idioms, semi-opaque idioms, opaque idioms. And uh, according to Mackay cited in Farnan, there are two types of idioms, idioms of encoding and idioms of decoding. Idioms of the encoding are those idiosyncratic lexical combination that have transparent meaning. So in my uh, presentation here, uh, I don't include this semi-opaque idioms, uh, uh, but I will uh, give some examples of transparent idioms, semi-transparent idioms and opaque idioms, but I'm not going to give this semi, uh, I don't include this semi-opaque idioms. Um, since I need to study more for this, uh, I need to research it more for this. Uh, okay. Transparent names that have me at all. Transparent names are not difficult to understand translate because the names can easily inferred from the meanings of their constituent parts. Uh, okay, next please. Okay, transparent idioms. Uh, I'll analyze uh, uh, two examples. Uh, the first example is ding that in. This is a very, uh, very common uh, idiom and a uh, transparent idiom. Uh, like ding that in. Ding means uh, stand uh, and that means farm in the terminal. So ding that in uh, here, the literal meaning is stand firm, stand firm. Uh, and uh, here the literal meaning and idiomatic have a very close meaning. Although it has an idiomatic expression, uh, it sounds close to the literal meaning and can be easily identified. This idiom means to never give up on something. This kind of idiom is being used as encouragement to someone not to give up in life in Tado. And it has the same meaning of an English idiom, stand firm. Next please. The second example which I would like to give uh, is Troval. Uh, Troval, uh, this is a Tado uh, idiomatic phrase. Troval, uh, which is uh, lustrous brain. Tro means brain and val means lustrous. So lustrous brain, the literal meaning is uh, um, uh, lustrous brain. And the idiomatic phrase of uh, this uh, well, refers to a person with good memory or having exceptional brain. So in Thado, this idiomatic phrase is being used by a speaker when he or she describes a person who is exceptionally fast in uh, learning. And it has the same meaning of saying, you have a good brain. You have a good brain. Okay, next, next slide, please. Okay, now let's come to semi-transparent idiom. Uh, this semi-transparent idioms 
the definition uh, according to this one, uh, which I have given before, those idioms that usually this carries a metaphorical sense that could be known only through common use, that is the meaning of its part has a little role to play in understanding the entire meaning. Uh, in Tado example, Nung uh, Hei Lo Vesan means Nung means back, uh, back, and then Hei 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 means turned, and Lo is the ne negative mark uh, marker, Hei Lo, and then Vesan means parting. So meaning uh, of this idiomatic phrase is Nung Hei Lo Vesan is to never change mind in any circumstances. So the usage of this idiomatic phrase is, uh, this idiomatic phrase is being said, when a person decides to never change his or her mind for someone, he or she leaves. Uh, uh, it's like a, a, a promise made by someone to never return to someone, like to never to return to someone who, whom she, uh, whom he or she uh, leave, okay. And this idiomatic phrase carries negative impacts to the addresser as well as the addressee. Next slide, please. Um, uh, example two, uh, the second example of semi-transparent idiom. Sel thi nung sang a sel to kai. Sel thi nung sang a nga, it has been removed. I, I'm sorry, to, like, I think it is not visible here. Sel thi nung sanga sel to kai. Sel sel means uh, it's mithun that is gayal. Thi means that uh, that uh, that mithun or gayal means that gayal or that mithun. Nung sang after or a determiner and sel to sel means mithun and then to is stockade and kai means fortify fortify. Uh, the literal meaning of of the idiom sel thi nung sang a sel tokai is to fortify mithun stockade after it died. This is the literal meaning. Uh, looking at the literal meaning, it has some sense which can be somehow understandable from the parts of each meaning. And the idiomatic meaning of the idiom is uh, being regretted for something irre irreparable or to come to realization of one's mistake after it is too after it is too late. So this is the uh, meaning, the idiomatic meaning of and the usage is this idiom is very common amongst the Tado, uh, amongst the Tados, and it is usually said to refer to a person who realizes of his or her mistakes when everything gets over or after it is being too late to mend for the lost. So that is the usage of this idiom. Next, please. Okay, now let's come to the last uh, um, idiom that is OPEC idiom. Uh, OPEC idioms. Uh, OPEC idioms are difficult to understand the actual meanings uh, from the part of its constituent elements, and it is the most difficult types of idioms. It is difficult to infer the actual meanings of the idiom from the literal meanings. There are various numbers of opaque idioms in Tado than transparent and semi-transparent idioms. Opaque idioms are difficult to translate in English. If you try to translate it, the result would be sometimes ridiculous and amusing as well. And few examples of opaque idioms are analyzed as follows. Next, please, opaque idiom. The first example of opaque idiom is uh, Pasi, pasi to le ngai pa vet. Pasi is a, it's a white tree fungus, white tree fungus, um, white tree fungus, and shot means extract, and le is conjunction. And ngai pa is, a, it's a name of a woman, uh, uh, name of a woman in the olden days, I, I should say, and then vet means look. Uh, so the meaning analysis of this opic idioms is here in the given sentence when each word is translated it brings out the meaning which is not related to one another which is not related to one another the literal meanings of each word and the actual meanings are com the actual meanings unless he or she learns to continue them the actual meaning of the given idiom is gaining two things at a time 
uh, and it is somehow close to English idiom, uh, killing two birds with one stone. So that is the meaning of this uh, idiom, Pasito Olen Naipavet in Tado. And the next example, please. Next slide. Okay, the next example. Yeah, uh, two example. minutes for that. All right. Uh, two, uh, okay, and the next example is Gulin Gulkeng Amui. Uh, this Gul means snake, and then in, in the terminal, Gulkeng means snake, lake, Gul snake, Keng is lake, Amui means a uh, uh, de uh, declarative, a uh, C of the declarative. Here, the actual meaning cannot be identified from the literal meaning of the phrase. The literal meaning of the idiom is a snack sees a snack sweet. This is the literal meaning. Each part of the phrase gives different meanings. The actual meaning of the idiom is someone who has an evil mind is able to understand any evil plot made upon him. The Thado people always have negative perception of a snack. Okay, that is the last example of open idiom. And this is my conclusion. Thados are rich in idioms uh, and it has been passed on to generations since time immemorial. And Thado idioms are mostly related to names of objects and animals which make comparison to the daily existence of human beings. Thado people also use colors as a symbolic perspective which is associated to feelings, emotions, and events. According to the present research, it has been found that Thado language has only few colors which have idiomatic expressions. Idioms have been used in speech or in, converse, uh, in conversation to enrich or deepen the language. Idioms of Thados are, uh, yeah, I have already said before. So uh, Thado is rich in idioms and there are various idioms to explore. Only certain e of idioms of Thado are selected and analyzed for the present paper. And thank you for hearing that so for my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for completing in time. So now I open uh, the paper for discussion. Uh, please uh, put up your questions, suggestions. Yes, I think Mary has raised hand, so you can. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes we can. Yeah, uh, Kimi, that was a very interesting paper. Uh, my yes, first question you. is, how do you differentiate between an idiom and other wise sayings or proverbs in Tado one? And I have seen your glossing uh, in example one as well as in the last example, the in is not a determiner. Okay, okay. Uh, so in the first example, uh, being that in, in is an imperative marker, okay? It's not okay. determiner. And in All the right. last- uh, Thank you, ma'am, for correct correcting. All right. Yes, um, so that was a very uh, good question. So how do we distinguish between an idiom and a proverb and okay. how are they related? Uh, idiom, actually idiom uh, means like, um, um, how to say, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of, uh, how to say, like idiom uh, which we give to someone, uh, which we say to someone, not as an advice, but then proverb is an advice, is a form of advice, I should say. And proverb, when we say proverb, all the, uh, uh, the each parts of the word, uh, the literal me from the literal meaning, the, the, the meaning can be, can be, can be understood. But then uh, in idiom, uh, each part of the, each part of the word cannot be, cannot be, uh, this like how to say, cannot be um, determined. Determine. So that's the difference of e idiom and then proverb. Proverb is a form of advice, but idiom is not a form of advice. But uh, if you look at your examples, for example, ding that in all all these are actually uh, we use them as an advice also. For example, uh, to in the first example to stand firm, you are yeah. or, uh, 
indirectly advising the person not to be a freaker minded person or to stick to your decision. And in the other example, say, ki no sanga, say, so I also like uh, uh, give this an advice to people not to take decisions very uh, hastily without uh, thinking. So in a way, even idioms are also advice. So okay. that distinction between idioms and proverbs in Thado is a very, very thin line. Yeah, the examples, even in case of proverbs also, the meaning, the literal meaning and what it means also differ. So uh, when you were collecting all this, how do you decide this is an idiom and this is not an idiom? That's a diff uh, that is one thing that uh, one has to keep in mind. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments? Am I audible? Yes, your voice is breaking. So, am I audible? No, no, not sir. No, we can't really make out. Yeah, I think we're having network issue. Uh, I have a small suggestion in the presentation uh, for the examples. If you can provide the literal translation of the expressions, Right. as well as the intended meaning, okay. uh, that would be very helpful for the okay. audience to actually understand how right. the literal meaning is connected to the uh, intended okay. meaning. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll try to improve the next okay. time. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are. Go ahead. Am I audible now? Uh, yes, sir. What do you mean? Uh, I do. Uh, yet, uh, there, there is no strict, uh, what do you call, a distinction between idioms and what do you call, uh, proverbs uh, okay. in terms of the constituent parts. So making a distinction would, would be rather difficult. But as you said, idiom usually, uh, no, uh, proverbs uh, usually are directed at at, at, at so whereas uh, other idioms may not necessarily necessarily involve idioms, so some idioms may in, involve uh, what you call uh, what you proverbs. So proverbs can be part of but how it be, how it differentiate between how it differs with uh, other uh, idioms that personally oriented at giving advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, hello, can you? Yeah, you, I think might be uh, disconnected. Okay. Um, any? Other questions? We can take one more question, I think, or a suggestion, comment. No? All right then. So thank you, uh, Kim Nelam, for your presentation. Thank you. So we move forward. Uh, with the next uh, presentation uh, by uh, Shurmangal uh, Sharma. Uh, I invite uh, speaker uh, Shurmangal Sharma sir to present uh, his presentation.
Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the, I'm going to present the Manipuri plurials and, uh, it's, uh, and their distinctions, the sing and the koi. Abhijan, please go to the next slide. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Is the slide moving, sir? I think uh, the speaker is muted. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So I tried to find out the the sources of sing and koi. Sing is uh, considered this would be better considered as generic plural, and the koi is the human plural. Try to find out the distinctions between them and where they come from, and uh, try to put some concept of general uh, number, whether would it be applicable in material own number, and avoidance of semantic redundancy. And then we find plural string like sing and the koi. Uh, with common nouns and uh, sing with uh, plural personal pronouns and a unique way of counting number of days uh, and uh, finally counting is which is more cultural from the cultural perspective some season we then go to the next slide yeah sources of plural suffixes we may consider to uh, two plural suffixes, then sing is generic plural and the koi is human plural. Sing might come from the bound noun stem, uh, sing, number, number of persons or teams. Sing might have, uh, sing might, uh, yeah. Similarly, similar pathway of development may be compared with modern Korean plural marker two. A form achieved through grammaticalization from the, which I found in the pre-2018. Then we see the examples from Mithilon, Man, Sinkup, Sana, and he has broken the thing into a number of fine pieces. And then we have the word which is, is in a compound, Mawari symbol, a collection uh, of a number of stories. And that we have, a, a, I am not sure whether the Mithilon speakers would, uh, whether they fa are familiar with this kind of phrases, like syntax Sintava is an act of counting and uncounting. Usually the, the number of dead and living persons where you find sing, take, and sing, tower. So machine, uh, we use the word machine number is the derived word achieved through more prefixation. Next slide, please. And then coming to the distinction between sing and the koi, uh, yeah, sing, oh, oops. Presented you miss any slide before about Koi? Uh, no, sir. This is slide number three and this is slide number four, sir. Uh, then what is the next slide? Just... Next is this one, sir. Uh, I think this should come first. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, this one, sir. Then when uh, then you go to the earlier slide. This one. Then the next one. No, no. Before is before. There is a koi one. Okay. Let me check, sir. Is there any? This is koi, sir.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is their case. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you come to the earlier one. Okay, I will, I will go to the earlier one, the just previous one. No, no. Is it this one, sir? Okay. Why human plural is assumed to have originated from the lexical noun? Why? That is all, all of people or things. So uh, why we have a number of examples of where why come from? We have the market name, why Ramban Kaitel. It is a main, it is one of the main market in Nepal. And the names of the important places around the location of the trailers in Nepal are seen to attest the word Khoai. We have Khoai High School, name of a place uh, in the heart of Imphal. Khoai in Adam Nepal, name of a place near the main market in Imphal. Khoai Wang Khai, name of a place near the palace. These areas may be considered historically too to have dense population. Why, uh, in the sense of out of all things or person, I have quite the have a column or doctor. Here, quai is all the nobility, then have a big good nominalizer, column or doctor, the best man or the best doctor out of all. Uh, yeah, then please go to the, uh, yeah, earlier. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sin, gen generic plural is seen to occur with animate and inanimate nouns. So, Nupa Sing, men, Nupi Sing, Ahan Sing, all men, women, then Hui Sing, dogs, Pichet Sing, birds, Kurak Sing. So, in the animates, you have Yum Sing. Turel sing, car sing. Then vegetables and the fruits, alu sing, kamen sing, then haino sing. With mass nouns, sometimes it's, it's possible to use the sing provides here large scale meaning. Uh, sini sing si, sini sing se, mamal kaya waigani. Sini sing se, here you have the generic plural with the mass noun. Sini sing se mamal kaya wagani. How much would be the price of this large amount of sugar? Please, uh, please go to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, koi is also used while forming plural personal pronouns, like we have the uh, uh, personal pronouns, singular, dual, plural, and uh, I have one here, uh, which is less discussed by the earlier scholars also, contracted plural, though they may be aware of it. So, I, Ibadi, Ikoi, here I don't find the contracted form in the first person, uh, and in the second, uh, person we have nam nabani nakoi uh, noi. Then third person ma nabani makoi moi. A koi may also be used to someone's personal name. Then the interpretation is ex and his are associated. Associates. Tombakoi unarusi. Tombakoi. Nursi Tomba is a proper noun, personal name, Tomba Koi Vinarusi. Here, let's meet Tomba and his party. Next slide. Uh, here, I will discuss a little bit about the general number, uh, which is cited in the Corbett and Howard, cited in Corbett 2000. So forms of nouns which are non-committal to number is assumed as general number. In Maitilon, 
a base form of count count may be interpreted either singular or plural. Here we see Tombana Mangda Kai Ure E Hai. Tombana Mangda Kai, here Kai is a base form or the of count noun. Here we don't see any plural uh, plural suffix or plural marker, but it may be interpreted as a singular or as well as as a plural. Pomba said that he saw a tiger or it may be tigers in the jungle. Next slide. And uh, we have the, here uh, disambiguation strategy where the head noun is uh, with a modifier, general number is not applicable. Like, as I say, in general number, given form, a given noun, it may be either interpreted as a singular or plural. But uh, mana, mana, atoba, huida, nunna thai. Mana, atoba, huida, nunna thai. Here, atoba is a adjective, and uh, hui is a, uh, like a, a head noun but it is not seen with any number marking. But it, in this case, in the above example, we have discussed this would, then it could have been interpreted either plural or singular, but when in this kind of construction, we would be definitely assumed as a singular. He hits the dog with a stone or stones. Then again, in the mana, achoba, facing the, here, definitely, if you want to make the uh, noun is plural, the head noun is plural, then he hits the big dogs with a stone or stones. With a determiner also, contrast between singular and the plural is structurally obvious. Lupado, uh, if we have do, and uh, this is interpreted only one person, and uh, we have uh, and uh, with the, it may not, it may not be uh, interpreted as, we cannot interpret it as a plural or singular. Definitely it is interpreted as singular. And uh, Nupa, we want to make it plural, Nupa sing do. We need, uh, we require this plural marker, uh, sing here, those men. Next slide. Uh, then coming to the avoidance of semantic redundancy, uh, it may be happening in many other Tibetan Roman languages spoken in Manipur and other areas. I'm not very aware of it, but let's see. In Maitalo, numeral follows the head noun and the numeral, uh, numeral itself determines the noun is singular or plural, even when numeral is Above one, uh, noun is never marked with uh, a plural suffix. We don't see any plural marking on the noun, that noun. Like Sagol Amma, we have one host, and uh, when it is more than one or so, Sagol Ahum, uh, three horses. Here, Sagol is remain as without marking any plural marking. And when we say one horse also, there's no marking. When we say three horses also, we don't mark plural here. Uh, it is found in the same way in the Tangkul also, which I got the, the data from one gentleman, Saxon Siro. Here, the same way, the avoidance of semantic redundancy we see. Say akha, say anga, and if we say, Sai Bing Panga, it is quite ungrammatical as in Manipuri. Sagol Singh Mari, we don't see Sagol Singh Mari or horses. Next slide, please. But then, string of uh, SPL and the GPL, uh, Koi may be followed by Sing, but the string of Sing Koi is not possible. The string is attached with human noun only. With, with, uh, I'm not come, come across uh, this kind of string with the inanimate or the uh, other 
non-human nouns. Ima koi sing here, Ima mother koi is a uh, HPL and uh, this is GPL. Sing som da pambiyu, som da pambiyu. I request all the mature and responsible women uh, take their seat, seat on this side. Then with the contracted plural personal pronouns, which sing, noi sing bo, noi sing bo kanana, upam sida kawi, noi sing bo kanana, upam sida kawi. Okay, here we see noi sing, and the bo is the focus marker, and the kawi. Uh, who did call all of you here? All of you, no symbol without exception here. It is all for without missing anyone. But with the usual regular form of regular form of uh, plural, uh, plural pronouns, personal plural pronouns, regular forms, we don't say nakoi uh, symbol is, but it's used. We see more contracted form is more uh, used while we put the sing. Next slide, please. Then we have counting number of days. Uh, it's, uh, I found um, it's something uh, maybe different from the earlier data. Like, so when counting number of days, numerals that follow the word day are suffixed with, particularly with ni. Here I close ni as day, but I'm not getting what would be the exact, uh, uh, the, the, glo the closes close. So I put it is for time being as a day only. So noma, noma we don't use. Noma is long as day and one, noma one day. And uh, right from, from uh, starting from two, no meet is day, ni, ni, we see. Ni, day, ni, two, and uh, uh, me, this is day, and uh, this is me, two, and this one, me, as a day. Likewise, all the numerals, uh, this comes from the ani, two, this comes from the ahum here. Shua is deleted, Shua is dropped. Amma, Ani, ahum. Here, all this, we don't see the, we see the deletion of Shua uh, prefix. So then, humni, we say three. Then, uh, the, again, you meet mangani. Here, still, we see the day, four days. Uh, this would be five days, sorry. There will be a correction. Manga would be this. I have written four. This would be five days. And uh, we don't say numit taruk. So it looks like a little odd. Numit, it should be numit taruk. If we are counting the number of days, it should be, ni should be here. Numit taruk ni, six days. The numerals one, uh, two, one to three are seen to have dropped the prefix. So, uh, even without the word day, one can use only numeral plus ni form. Bomba mangani, mangani here five and the ni with the ni, I close is day. Mangani leirega hala e. Bomba mangani leirega hala So native speaker will usually understand mangani. When we say mangani, this is a five days. Bomba has returned after five days. Next slide, please. And the uh, counting is, counting is at uh, some, si. some uh, I'm not sure whether in other culture, this kind of counting might be uh, implemented or used. Well, in certain, particularly in certain ritual related Context items are counted as sang si sang and it sang here. It will come again alternatively sang si sang si sang si. 
instead of using, using numerals to count them, but it is in the very restricted and limited use of it. The equivalent meaning of, I guess the equivalent meanings of Xiang is life and C is that we consider the equivalence in terms of usual numerals is, so how do we start counting? Sum is a one. Uh, um, Mary, I think uh, some drawings is happening in drawing. your screen. Uh, Mary Hawkeep's from Mary Hawkeep's phone. There's some oh. drawing in the screen. Can you please uh, remove it, Mary? <laughs> Or no. yeah. I'll just call her in. Yes, yes. We should try to move on as uh, we are running out of time. Yeah. yeah, equivalence in terms of usual numerals. We start some, I make it equivalent in the usual numeral number, regular. Uh, Chang, we start one, and C is two, Chang again. So here we see the alternative, like Chang, C, Chang, C, and it keeps on going in. And, uh, uh, this would be the pattern, but it would have counting the whole everything as some C is not uh, is not possible, of course. But as I said, it has a very limited use, and uh, up till certain uh, 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 numerals it could be with the limitations. So uh, items to be offered to a God that is met. Some, when we say, when we are offering something to God, uh, potatoes, brinjal, whatever, we count the number of, in this way, like we would say this is auspicious, if you count some, see some, then it will be three items. But we will not count usually one, two, three. We will count the items, number of brinjals or other vegetables, count, uh, vegetable, count items as, Sang si sang, we will not offer sang uh, si only two or like four. If you say again five, it is sang. So we look here very interestingly, all the odd numbers are in a way considered to be auspicious here. Again, some could be formed as a pair, you make that sang, it makes a set. So a set of two but it would be counted as one, it may be a set of two, it may be counted as one, it may be from a set up here. But this is really happens like some, I put mark, this could be a set of two items, it may count as a sum, and a C also, it may consist of a set of two items usually. So when, usually, this is very much predominant in the, I think all the uh, they may be aware of it, while we during the time of uh, rituals or festivals related to religion, we offer the deities or gods the some uh, bananas, particularly very specifically when we buy bananas, we check the bananas, some which is some bananas considered to be auspicious, and I got a lot of blessings from the god if you offer that chung bananas, and in the market, it will be very expensive. And they sold the vendors sold at a higher price than the regular sea kind of sea bananas. Next slide, please. Yep. Yeah. So I had one more about the, this is also tumma uh, is pear. We use jura also pear, yeah, a loan word. Jura, Tumba versus Nama, a single strain. So when we use the word in a collocation, we, uh, we, it is usually followed by the verb Shuba, Shu, I, I don't like the bar here. This is a verb root Shu, Tumba Shuba, exists as a pair or Shu complete. Shu means complete, Nama Taba, remain a single, Nama, Nama means, uh, the way it is followed by a verb ta, uh, means to ta, the meaning of ta is fall, verb, right? So literally to fail to form a pair. So morphology, to may be analyzed as consisting of two morphemes, 
two, it comes from the two to stitch verb and uh, ma, it comes from the numeral one. So underlying meaning could be something that is stitched together as one and uh, nama also may be analyzed as consisting of two morphemes. Uh, na is stand uh, as <clears throat> in samna, a strand of here, ma, ma, that comes from ama one. So here I have, to, uh, sorry for uh, incompletion of this. Uh, underlying minute could be like more or less, uh, nama is you have one item, that fails to make a pair would be the underlying meaning. Well, uh, with this uh, presentation, I wind up. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this very detailed presentation. Uh, now the paper is uh, open for discussion. Sir, I have a couple of questions. Um, yes. Please go ahead. Mm, regarding the, the the example sentence, Ima Khoising from the Pombi Yu. Ima Khoising, that Khoi and Sing is put together. Yes. Is it really necessary this, uh, these two Khoi and Sing put together? Why? Uh, why the Ima Khoi from the Pombi Yu? or Ima Sing from the Pombi Yu, cannot they be correct, sir? That is number one question. Uh, and- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, yes, yes. Please continue your question. Uh, and the uh, other question is uh, regarding the uh, uh, counting of number of days. Noma is yes. one day, mid nini, mm -hmm. Numit Humni, Numit Marini, Numit Mangani, or so on and so on. But is it is it exactly is it necessarily to uh, put the numit or in every count? Why not Nini, Humni, Marini, Mangani? Don't they say uh, three days, four days, five days, etc.? Uh, well, that's, uh, I will uh, answer your first question that Koi and the Sing like, like Ima Koi Sing. Okay, this I observe maybe it's uh, stylistic mm -hmm. changes. It is possible like Ima Koi. Okay, Ima Koi from the Pandemi U, uh, although I haven't discussed in the paper, this is possible. Ima Koi here is that you can add two plurals of different two types of plurals, koi and uh, sing together. Is it clear? So I happen to hear uh, like the other speaker sometimes in a very polite manner. Yeah, they used to say, but it may not be frequent, I'm sure, but it happens, I, I come across that, ma koi sing, ma koi sing from the pambiyu, that is, it gives more emphasis, more collective sense. So it's possible, of course, Ima Khoi or Ima Sing Som the Pambi U is also possible. Ima Khoi Som the uh, Pambi U is also possible, no doubt. Is that clear? Am I clear about your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. For the next question, uh, next uh, uh, question like, uh, we say, as I say, no ma, we don't put ni. So I wonder, but for which I need more investigation. Is it working like a numeral classifier or remnants of numeral classifier? I'm not very sure about it, but definitely, as I say, it is maybe numidini also possible, or in the other examples I have given, without numid, it is also possible. Like once you say nini, humni, marini, mangani, it definitely indicates it is a number of days. It is really talks about the number of days. So uh, that's the, and in the other example, I have already said that tomba mangani here I don't use numi. 
here tomba nuvi mangani lairaga lakta ni or halak e it is also possible tomba mangani lairaga hala e without the word numit you can say only the numeral plus ni am i clear yes sir thank you okay, okay. Uh, can i come in since no time uh, we're actually out of time. Okay, so we can take the last one. Very quick question. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, yeah, Dr. Samonga, thanks for your yeah. presentation. So it happens even with uh, uh, my language that uh, this so called Xinyan or Koi, in most instances, you can use them. Huh? You, can in, you can use them interchangeably. So in some of your examples, something like uh what is for some example like i uh i don't want to tell because they're lack of the what is for time so if i say uh, can i say something like a you said a a koi can i also say a koi sing for personal for what is for the, the pronoun a a koi sing non koi sing with sing or ma uh, sing so it, this construction also is possible, right? Yeah, it looks, but we, it tends to happen more frequently with the, as I call it, uh, contracted kind of personal plurials. Noi, noi is the uh, nakoi, right? Mm -hmm. Nakoi, in Mekelon, nakoi, it may be contracted as noi. So it is, uh, sing is usually can be readily attached uh, to the noi, contracted form, with the contracted form. Yeah, the question, no doubt, in the, it should be possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are out of time. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Rongbal sir, for your very uh, detailed presentation. So now we are going to the next paper by uh, Omila. So I invite the speaker to do the presentation. Vijin, can you please share the screen for her? Okay, okay, okay. Good afternoon, teachers and my dear colleagues. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Omila, please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. My topic is compounding in Kuru. Next slide, please. Introduction. Kuru language is an endangered Tibetan Roman language spoken in Kuru Nibli and Kuru Kule and Kampuhi district of Manipur. The present research work focuses on the varieties spoken at Kuru Nibli village. Kurum is one of the dialects spoken in Manipur, recognized by the government of Manipur. According to GA Gration, Kurum is under old Kukinaga section, but according to Robert Sepper, Kurum is included in the old Kuki branch of Kukis section of Burmic division. The present paper focuses on the study of compound words found in Kurum. Compounding occurs when two or more words are joined to make one larger word, in which one word modifies the meaning of the other, the head. This means that such compounds have a binary structure. The productivity of compounding in many languages is due to its semantic transparency and versatility. Next slide, please. Yes, sir, I couldn't see the full page. Slide. Okay, sir. The meaning of the compound word may be similar to or different from the meanings of its components in isolation. When a new compound word is formed, we already know the meaning of its constituents, and the only task we face is to find out a, find out about the semantic relation between the constituents. The exact nature of the semantic relation between the two. Okay. 
the exact nature of the semantic relation between the two constituents receives no formal expression and is a matter of interpretation by the language user. As a language user, we have to interpret that relationship on the basis of the meanings of the compound constituents, our knowledge of the word, and sometimes the context in which the compound is used. In Purum, in the centered compounds, coordinate compounds, now now in uh, coordinate compounds, noun adjective compounds, noun verb compounds, verb verb compounds are found. Methodology and cut. Uh, sorry, this is not a full site, uh, full screen. Not full screen. Okay. Uh, I can't. I couldn't see the full page, full slide. Okay, I just enlarged. That may be the reason. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Methodology and collection of data. The qualitative research methodology in, uh, is used in these research. This study is a field based linguistic description. The method for data collection is through interview. In this method, native speakers are asked for translation of words and sentences from English to their mother tongue, Puru, using the contact language Manipuri. This is the lingua franca of the state, Manipur. The recorder is being used in collecting the data in order to solve any problem as well as analyzing the data. Next slide. So, compounding. Compounding is the process of word formation that creates compoundations, lexemes. That is, in familiar terms, compounding occurs when two or more words are joined to make one longer word. The meaning of the compound may be similar to or different from the meanings of its components in isolation. The component stems of a compound may be of the same part of speech, as in the case of the Manipuri word, Onglambi, foot part composed of two nouns, Kong, food, and Lambi, part. Or they may belong to different parts of speech, as in the case of the Manipuri word Fima, red cloth, composed of the noun P, thought, and the adjective Amalba, red. Next slide, sir. Bauer, in his introductory text, defines a compound as the formation of a new lexion by adjoining two or more lexions. But Martin, in, uh, in expansion, Transposition and derivation, 1967, presents another view, saying that compounds do not exist as a separate sort of word formation. Indeed, he distinguishes only two basis, basic categories of word formation, expansion and derivation, whether a complex word belongs to one or the other category, depends on whether what he calls the determinator head. The head of the complex word is an independent morpheme or not. For margin, an expansion is a complex word in which the determinism is an independent morpheme. Expansions might have either a bound or a free morpheme as their determinant. In current terms, the modifier or non head is a man. Uh, this allows margin to class prefix items like reheat or outrun. Same as compounds like steam board or color blind. Words in which the determinator, determinator head is found um, are derivations. So, next slide, please. Endocentric and exocentric compound. Compounds which have a head are called endocentric compounds. A head of a compound has similar characteristics to the head of a phrase. It represents the core meaning of the constituent, and it is of the same word class. For example, in snip chief, chief is the head. Compounds without a head are called intercentric compounds or bahubihe compounds, the Sanskrit name. The distinction between endocentric and epicentric compounds is sometimes a matter of interpretation and is often of natural relevance. For example, whether within green, greenhouse is an endocentric or geocentric compound depends on whether within it as a kind of house. The major interest in the head of a compound relates to the fact that where there is a clear head, 
its position seems to be constrained. And the centric compounds tend to have heads in a larger systematically on either the right or left. Next slide. So, endocentric compound. N2 is the head that governs the grammatical category of the compound. And N1 is to modify and delimit N2. The N1 plus N2 form a compound N3. That is a subtype of N2. This type of compound is productive in blue. Example, rum, then just pui dog forms a compound word, rum ui fox. In the compound, rum ui fox N2. Uh, we do categorize the compound and N1 rum then modify and G limits N2. Then rum then uh, N1 plus we do N2 form a compound rum we fox N3. The compound rum we fox N3 is a subtype of we do N2. Next slide, sir. Coordinate compound. There is a kind of compound where there is some reason to think of both words as equally serving head like characteristics as in clipboard, board, a clip, and a board. They, uh, these are called a positional or coordinate or one the Sanskrit name com compounds. Coordinate compounds can be a combination of synonyms, a combination of uh, antonyms, or a combination of parallel things. Shanga, animal fish, for example, for manipulate. Coordinate compounds can have special characteristics in a language. In a coordinate compound, N1 plus N2 compound both have an equal status. In other words, neither of them has the compound. In an endocentric compound, as described above, N3 is a subtype of N2. While in a coordinate compound, both N1 and N2 tend to be a subtype of or a part of N3, as one in the example within below. Example, blue rain, tree, water forms a compound of blue tree weather. In the compound, blue tree weather and tree, uh, both blue rain, uh, N1 and tree water and two have the girl status. Neither of them has the compound. Next slide. Noun adjective compound. This type of compound is also productive in Puru. The endocentric N1 plus an adjective. And two compounds belong to another major type of compound in Puru. In this compound, uh, N1 denotes the class of the noun and heads the compound. The adjective is used to modify N1. The compound N2 is then a subtype or, 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 or as part of N1. Example, three water, the three and three, three and that in the compound. Trillion flood N2 contains a noun N13, which refers to water, and an adjective Lien, which means big and uh, modifies the head noun, tree, water, N1. It can be seen that trillion uh, flood N2 is a part of tree, water, N1. Then looks like okay. noun, but compound. In an adjacent N1 plus verb. Now, V and two compound, N1 is observed to be an object of V. That is to say, V is transitive bearing an argument N1. Uh, N2 possesses the function of N1 plus V. This type of compound is not very productive in Puru. Example, when you queen, the skin of shed, when you cannot earthquake. The compound, when you cannot earthquake, and two consists of a new queen and one has been knocked shape. So, next slide, sir. Sir, please move to the next slide, please. Verb of compound. The compounding of two verbs that leads to a new lection is also productive in Purum language. Example, po, burn, thus koi, break, forms a compound word po koi to burst. The compound v3. Uh, a pokoi to verse consists of V1 pok burn and a V2 koi bread. So, next slide. Conclusion. Compounding is the con uh, concatenation of two or more words to form or create one larger word. In many, in many languages, this word formation process is used 
frequently because of its semantic transparency and versatility. There are a large number of Purim words found home through compounding. We find a lot of compounding in Purim. Noun noun compounds, verb compounds, and mixed apps. Noun noun compounds in the century, now at the century. Noun verb compounding can result in nouns or adjacentric verb forms. There are also occurrences of noun adjective compounds and they result in specified nouns. Verbal compounding is also frequent and leads to the formation of new lexemes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, plenty of time for discussion. So I invite any questions, comments, suggestions uh, for the speaker. Okay, uh, Krishna, can I- Yes, continue? please go ahead. So I like the example, uh, I was uh, sorry, so looking at the example. Realmu Kihot, that is uh, Queen's sake. Okay, Queen, the first constituent is Queen, and then sake, uh, the second constituent is sake. So uh, this is um, what I, uh, yeah. Uh, these type of compounds are uh, semantically, they are, uh, what, is called, what I call, Cultural induced compound words. Okay, I, I, I so these are this has some cultural what you call, uh, background. So uh, semantically, uh, uh, these are very interesting. Uh, something like Renu Kehot. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, morphologically it is the same as uh, any other compound word, but uh, semantically it has some what you call cultural uh, connotation. So. Or uh, earthquake. So in English, earthquake. Okay, earthquake, earthquake. The earthquake. Like in Tadog is the being. So so some. But in your in your language, that is what you call this uh, purum. So the earthquake is literally a combination of the, the queen and the uh, sake. So it has some cultural connotation. Uh, that uh, that is something that I like. It. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, any more questions? Okay, if there is no one, then a very quick observation. Uh, uh, I think there are some available literature on Broom work by some of the earlier researchers. So, Omila, have you done any uh, comparison in terms of what formation, uh, sorry, compounding? Is there any significant, you know, uh, findings that you have in your work apart from the earlier research? Uh, one of my senior have done uh, uh, a dissertation. Uh, what uh, thesis? Uh, he have submitted a thesis on Purun, and in his thesis, uh, he have done uh, compounding in noun noun. Uh, now adjective etc etc et but he has he had not done uh, anything in uh, verb verb compounding uh, in my uh, in my paper i will focus on this uh, verb verb compounding okay all right good okay another area where you can expand your work is uh, look at uh, what you call uh, such what you call compound words which have some cultural uh, meanings attached to them and one of the challenges uh, when working with such a compound word is that uh, some of the constituent words have become opaque. Uh, so that because of the opacity, it's difficult to determine the meaning. But a careful researcher can infer some meaning uh, through what it could close uh, sitting with the native speaker. You can infer the uh, what it could probable meaning of some constituent words. So those are all of the, what you call great interest, especially for languages of knowledge uh, such as Purum, uh, which is severely endangered. So looking at those compounds are of cultural relevance and trying to trace their, what you call their, their, their ancestral uh, meanings wherever possible, so uh, this will be what it for, uh, to contribute uh, largely to the community and to the linguistic. Uh,
I have a quick question. Um, uh, have you looked into the uh, productivity of these different patterns? Uh, how frequent these patterns are in the language? For example, the verb verb pattern. So do you find it very frequently that two verbs occur? No, no, I didn't find it frequently, sir. Uh -huh. mm. So it would be good to know, like, of these different uh, compound types, which of them are, you know, productive and which of them are not quite productive. What, sir? Pardon, sir? Uh, it would be a good idea to, you know, find out uh, like, yeah. which of these patterns are uh, uh, productive in the language and which of them are uh, not productive. Okay, sir. So uh, one reason maybe the earlier researcher didn't find her firm, maybe, maybe because it wasn't very productive, so probably uh, missed uh, that particular compound type. As comparing to the other compounds, uh, the, uh, uh, the noun verb compounding is very productive, less uh, productive. Mm -hmm. so I just want to know the method of your data collection because I just want to know the, the method of your data collection because um, if, yes, the yes. Data, if the data is collected only through elicitation, mm -hmm. then you will get only certain kind of uh, compound based on the questionnaire, based on the uh, questionnaire that is at hand. Yes. So my experience shows that uh, if you look at some text, uh, any text, uh, mm -hmm. analyzed text, uh, mm -hmm. stories like folklore or even narration, uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of uh, what you call text, you you can come up with multiple types of uh, uh, compound uh, compound words uh, contrary to your even uh, whatever assumption that you might have. This is one area where you can work out. Uh, extensively on compound what you examine texts can be a story can be a narration can be about anything so examine those uh, texts and then find out what are the compounding processes there are. okay sir yes that's a very good suggestion okay sir thank you for the suggestion sir okay so do we have any more questions comments Okay, if none, then thank you, uh, Omila, for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, very quick announcement. I have been told that the speaker, sixth speaker, has confirmed that uh, he will be able to do the presentation. So we have two more presentations to go. Uh, our next speaker is Daimalu Brahma. So I invite the speaker to give his presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my screen is visible now. Yes, it is. Uh, just to do the uh, full, full uh, slideshow mode. It's okay? Yes, yes. Mm. Please start. Okay. Uh, my topic is pluralization system in Bodo language. So firstly, I give some introduction. Bodo language belongs to the Tibeto Burman group of uh, group of the Sino Tibetan language family. Uh, it's mainly spoken in BTR Assam and some parts of Urnasal Pradesh, Nagaland, Meghalaya. West Bengal and some parts of Bangladesh and Nepal. It is one of the scheduled languages of the Indian constitution and Bodo has some dialects. It's a Eastern dialect, Western dialect, Southern dialect and uh, dialect of Bengal and West Bengal area. Uh, the present paper uh, focus on the standard variety of language. Uh, here uh, I'm going to discuss uh, plur uh, plur uh, pluralization process of the Bodo language. 
here i uh, try to discuss four types of process that is uh, pluralization by suffixation one is by re reduplication and uh, pluralization by adjective of quantity or quantity words and pluralization by numerals first uh, uh, by uh, pl uh, pluralization by suffixation here bodo uh, uses three kinds of plural markers to form plural nouns and pronouns by suffixation process the three plural uh, plural markers are sir per and man these are added to the singular form of nouns and pronouns to form pluralization example seima per seima per dogs nung nung sir ada ada man uh, here uh, for noun uh, for noun bodo uses only two kinds of uh, suffix that is man and per man is you would uh, use with uh, kinship noun and proper noun that is name of person and per is used with common noun materials noun etc example examples are given here their kinship noun uh, kinship with kinship noun for example apa my father man plural marker apa man bipa man adaman nangaman etc uh, here uh, uh, man uh, Man is uh, added to the proper uh, proper noun uh, who is uh, showing human. That means name of person like Roman. Roman is a name of person and man is the plural marker and Roman man means Roman and others. Uh, like this number 10 example Raman and 11 number 11 example Niziraman, Nizira and others like this. Uh, the plural marker per adds to the common noun material noun and adjective nouns to indicate plural in bodo for example mansi per mansi per means men dao means bird dao per means birds na means uh, fish na per means fish plural lauti means stick lauti per man means sticks and uh, like lengra is a drinker and lengra for means drinkers so uh, next pluralization by uh, suffixation for pronoun generally the uh, plural marker sir affects to the pronouns to form plural in bodo but sometimes per and man also attach to the specific pronouns uh, the marker per uh, be attached to the demonstrative pronoun to indicate non-human and sir be attached to the demonstrative pronouns to indicate human uh, the man uh, man also attached to the second and third person honorific pronouns to form plural in bodo for example uh, second person pronoun nung plus sir nung sir nung tang Nung tang means uh, second person honorific and nung tang man means you plural honorific. Like this third person uh, with third person b plus sir b sir and b tang uh, third person honorific b tang man means they. In Bodo first person singular pronoun is ang that means I. Uh, it does not take uh, plural suffix in bodo it is uh, pluralized by uh, suppletion that means uh, this uh, root is different uh, it is zeng. Uh, for example in demonstrative pronoun uh, per uh, b plus per b per here per is uh, for non-human and sir for human uh, Beper, this uh, this demonstrative is for non-human, and baser, this demonstrative is for human. Uh, 
demonstrative like uh, this tell by plus per by per here those non-human and by sir here those human uh, in sentence example given here vapor alwa mazanonga these potatoes are not good and uh, 26 baser mansia mazanonga those people are not good up uh, the pluralization by reduplication here uh, reduplication is also another important way of pluralization in bodo language some of the pronouns like interrogative indefinite and reflexive pronouns be uh, fl uh, pluralized by the process of complete reduplication in bodo the complete reduplication of nouns and adjective also make plur uh, plural in sentence level for example an interrogative uh, pronoun ma means what mama means what plural sir means who sir sir like who plural bobe bobe means who is bobe bobe means who is plural bobo means where and bobo bobo means where plural uh, indefinite pronoun for example serba means somebody serba serba means somebody's kaise means someone kaise kaise means someone's plural bobo bobo means somewhere bobo 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 means somewhere plural the uh, reflexive pronoun also uh, make plural by reduplication like gao means cell gao gao means selves uh, now uh, here noun uh, reduplication uh, pl uh, pluralized by reduplication for nouns noun also indicate plural meaning by complete reduplication in bodo language for example gami means village gami gami means village to village or villages no means house no no means houses lama means road lama lama means through the roads or road to road uh, example in 39 bisere gami gami beraiden that means they are roaming in the village or village to village that means uh, they are roaming more than one village uh, pluralization by reduplication for adjectives here uh, example is given here guza means red guza guza means red plural gufur means white gufur gufur means white plural it is clear in the sentence example be baganao guza guza bibar bardeng here uh, that means uh, red flowers are blooming in this garden be hatayao gufur gufur mosu pandeng the white cows are selling in this market the that kind of uh, uh, pluralization process is found in bodo language so pluralization by adjective of quantity or quantity words and the quantity words like gebang means many and burza means many or mass also indicate plural in bodo for example biao gebang mansi feidengman many people come here yeah, that gebang is making pluralize the noun mansi number 46 biao gebang mansi per feidengman uh, that's a uh, sentence also same meaning many people come here but 45 and 46 in this sentence slightly difference between the two in biao gebang mansi per feidengman here that mansipur pluralize is something more foc uh, focused than the uh, 45 sentence and 47 angbang dao nudengman i saw many verse here also dao is making the uh, plural by gbang and bia burja thaiju khabai that means he has plucked many mangoes that means more than one mango Pluralization by numerals. Uh, numerals are bound from in Bodo. They occur with the help of classifier in sentence. And numerals also express plurality of nouns. 
For example, in the sentence, Ang bay sanay sklako sinaye. Here, I know those two girls. And number 47, uh, uh, the number, 40, uh, number 46 example here, the plural marker is not uh, not attached with the sikla. But optionally in some other other contexts, this marker can be attached to the uh, to the noun. Even the uh, neural is uh, staying in this sentence. For example, in 47s, ang satam siklapar ko sinaye. But in this context, uh, it is slightly different, uh, different uh, meaning. That means I recognize the three girls, but here the three girls, uh, that means uh, girls are plural, but also uh, that three girls is I recognize among them. That means something more focus point is recognize here. A number 48 sentence, Ang Taitam Afel Zagan. Here I I will eat the three Afels. Here also Afel is uh, Afel uh, Afel is without plural marker, it's become plural in this sentence. So uh, my conclusion points uh, the investigation found that Bodo language. Uh, pluralized by four types of process that is pluralization by suffixation pluralization by reduplication and pluralization by adjectives of quantity and pluralization by numerals uh, three plural markers found in bodo that is sir moon and fur for noun that means name of person and per affix with uh, affix with common nouns, materials now, material noun, and adjective nouns, and also affix with the non-human demonstrative pronoun. The plural, uh, the plural marker sir affix with the personal pronouns to form plural in Bodo, and also attached to the demonstrative pronoun to indicate human. The marker men also attached with the second and third person honorific pronouns to form plural in Bodo. In Bodo, interrogative and indefinite and reflexive pronouns be pluralized by the complete reduplication. And complete reduplication of nouns and adjective also can make plural in the language. These are my reference. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Zimalu, for the presentation. We have plenty of time. So thank now you, I invite uh, comments, questions, and suggestions uh, from the participants. Uh, Krishna, can I just ask one quick? Yes, yes. Please go ahead, Tansu. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the paper. Uh, I just uh, was looking at the uh, first, Welcome, I think, two, three uh, uh, slides. Uh, so now I was just looking at the suffixation part, I think, the pluralization by suffixation. Okay. Uh, so semantically, I, I don't know how, because when we say my father and others, that would, uh, it'll be like in English, at least it would be uh, my father. So I, like many fathers. Right, okay. uh, or, or even uh, if you look at the name, proper name, uh, if you put a plural there, it does, it, if it's John and John, uh -huh. uh, that would uh, refer to many Johns. Uh, here in this case, it's a little different in that you have uh, Ronan and others. Roman and others, yeah. Or my father and others. My father and others, so yeah. I, I, I'm just... Uh, I, I'm not. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it, it sounded a little bit different from the uh, from what we know as plural or pluralization. So uh, is, is that? I mean, I don't know whether this is also true of other languages, but it's slightly different from what we know as uh, plural. 
uh, here that uh, men is the plural marker in Bodo. In Bodo Garo language, that a, a is coming for first person reference and n is come for second person uh, refer, uh, second person reference and b come for yes, uh, um, Demaru, uh, yes. the plural meaning here is somewhat different so yeah. can you explain how it is different from the usual plural sense of okay. you know uh, many or more okay. than two Daimelo, uh, how do you say in case you have hypothetically you have more than one father okay you have many fathers okay then how do you say my fathers in that my case, fathers yeah, yeah. If you have something like many fathers, you say how you will say my fathers? More than one father, that means. If you, so yeah, if you have, suppose, hypothetically, if you have many fathers, yes. okay? okay, hypothetically, okay. then how would you say my fathers? Uh, here also we say apartment. Then the gloss, my father and others are, mm -hmm. oh, so my fathers and others, who are these others? So. Uh, and along with uh, along along with father's friends. Okay, in this means your father plus other people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, your father plus his friends, right? Yeah, yeah, sir. Oh, my okay. father and my father's friends. Okay, okay. The, uh... I got it. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, that's why it, it is in this context that it's slightly different. I mean, if the gloss was my father's. Then I think uh, it, it's clear, but when you put in others, uh, that is, I think, beyond the uh, pluralization. I know, uh, I think there are many Boro scholars in the group. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 that is a common. So, is this is actually a common phenomenon uh, uh, in our part uh, where we use the plural marker with uh, actually uh, personal names and kinship terms. Uh, and this is known as an associative plural. So this is not really talking about quantity of you know identical items, but a, you know plurality of you know uh, an item and its associates. So I think that's what uh, Temsu is looking for here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, the, okay. that, that clarification helps. We yeah, have yeah. to look. We have. We have. We have to look deeply. Can I? Can I? Can I add something? Yes. yes, madam, yes. Go ahead. Uh -huh. So um, actually, this also has uh, its equivalent very, very close to Garo. So we'll say apamang. Apamang means apamang reba. Means uh, if you say apamang reba, my my father and others came. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in other words, his friends or his family members. Okay, close uh, those who used to used to be with him. Apamang used to be with him. So it includes them. And amamang. My mo my mother and others. It could be the mother and her and her sisters. It would it could be her children, her friends. So it it has the, it has the same meaning. It is it, like uh, I think associative plural. I think this uh, this is a correct description. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I also want to add. Um, actually, in in our languages, uh, in Bodogaro languages, we use this to indicate politeness to our elders. Like, uh, suppose sometimes we don't want to specify, as in like my father, so we say it in a way like my father and others, or my father and the like. It can be for brother, it can be for sister, anyone elder. We kind of use in this way. If I have to ask someone, uh, you know, younger than me, and if I have to ask, where is your father, I may not say like uh, directly uh, Nampa, if it's Boro, I might say Nampa, man, like to be more polite. I think it's more of a uh, cultural context coming into the suffixation of yes, man, yes, yes. even if it is just one father you have, you may not have two fathers, but still you use it out of politeness. Yes, yes that's another function to be, you know, note. Okay. okay. Can you go to the reduplication of something like uh, what you call which which to kind of reduplication? Uh, reduplication, reduplication of uh, who, who, who? Here. No, reduplication. Yes. Re yes. No, before that, I think not not this one. Uh, who who which which kind of thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, here. Ah, ah, mama, 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 mama. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. pluralization by redu reduplication. So here. Uh, mm -hmm. The plural is reduplicated. So when it is reduplicated, then what sense do you get? Okay. So what is the so is it used for 
some kind of what they call particularization. So what uh, something like if they say sur sur, you know, who are the people who are mm. going to come for the program? Uh, it do you have some kind of semantic meaning when it is used there. So in addition to forming a plural, there must be some context in which uh, these words are used. So if the context are specified then the meaning becomes clearer. Otherwise, just looking at it, uh, one is simply lost. So, uh, I mean, so reduplication always carries emphasis meaning, right? So do you have some kind of emphasis meaning? Emphatic emphasis meaning there in, in a context? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you? Uh, can I say something? Can I say something in this regard? Yes, please go ahead. Uh -huh. So uh, this one, you know, what uh, what is objecting to, uh, not I'm not objecting to, but want clarification. So in number twenty seven, perhaps you could make a sentence. You could make a sentence. The paper presenter could make a sentence like, "My my kunanga, my my kunanga. What what all do you what what all things should okay. I bring? What all things do you do you need?" Then sur sur means uh, that will be in, in Garo. It will be sa 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 de by who all are coming like this. Okay, so therefore the context will be supplied here. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to know. It categorizes, right? It separates uh, some kind of so that categorization it has some that emphatic meaning, right? So that is what I wanted. Yeah. So can you go to sentence number forty-three? Quickly, forty-three, then uh, okay. I will wind up my quickly. So forty-three. So here, okay. Uh, red flowers are blooming in the garden. So here, uh, ga, ga, gaza, gaza. So red flowers are blooming in the in this garden. Or oh, what is the meaning? So can you get this meaning? So uh, th there are red flowers blooming redly in the garden. Do you have that kind of uh, blooming redly in the garden, or no, simply? Not red not, red? Re not redly, sir. That means many <laughs> red flower. <laughs> <laughs> signingly and do you get something like signingly or something like uh, what gazingly uh, some, that meaning is not indicated here right okay uh, may I say something sir no 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 not that meaning <laughs> that will become totally different right yes, yes. So different the plurality of the you know flowers yeah, it means it means the plurality of flowers. Many yes, red yeah. flowers are blooming. Many red yeah. flowers are blooming in the garden. This is what it means. Yeah. Yeah, but if it has to be redly or reddishly, then no, uh, in my no. language it will be jowlili. So there is a instead of gajau gajau, it will be jowlili. That is how no. it occurs. It. It's in quite Boro, popular. it's not redly. Yeah, that's what no, no, I mean. No. Yeah. All right. Um, it seems like red, red, red flowers. Yes, yes, yes. That was also implied. Yeah, yeah, red, red, you know, there are more than one flower. Mm -hmm. Although we don't say that in, like that in English. Like this, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not grammatical in English. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a one observation here, uh, the reduplication on the adjectives does have a quality of plurality for the noun. But if you go to the reduplication of the nouns in the previous slide, okay. go to the previous slide, slide number 14. For example, gami gami. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. This is slide number fourteen, yes. sir. Uh, this is different, actually. This doesn't really mean villages. Uh, we understand mm. the person visited multiple villages. I think that's mm -hmm. more of a uh, entailment. The, I mean, inference that we make. So, if we compare gami gami with gami per. The okay. two expressions don't exactly give the same meaning. So yes, here, village to village is more appropriate, I think, uh, uh, gloss uh, rather yeah. than villages. 
So this will, I don't think will be accurate. Yeah. So when I say I, I, we visited from one village to another, that of course implies that there are more than one village. But I, I wouldn't say that that's a plural expression. Yeah. But here nouns but becomes more than for the adjectives. We the clearly context. have the sense of plurality for the noun, or it can be each and every village, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Like a distributive sense might also be relevant here rather than plurality. So I would point that out uh, in the description. There is also a question in the chat box. Yes. Could you give a sentence where Gao self is reduplicated to form plural Gao Gao selves? Yes, why not? Uh, I can say verbally. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Bisira gao gao na maugan, like this. Bisira gao gao na maugan. That means uh, they will do themselves. Bisira gao gao na maugan. That means they will do themselves. Am I correct? Yes, it seems. Uh, okay. Sagar. Got his uh, answer. Okay, okay. What about if you say each one's uh, come out like that? Each one's do the work. Do you use gao gao there? Each one's. Uh, each one's one is sase sase. We use sase sase. Yeah, there would be a different expression. A di different okay. state one. Okay. Yeah, uh, if I can say something. Uh, yes, go ahead. This is about Gao, uh, like uh, Gao Gao and Gao Zheng Gao. Actually, Gao, uh, it has two uh, different uh, meanings. Like uh, one is reciprocal and the other is reflexive. If it is reflexive, it can be uh, re reduplicated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so we are at the end of this session. Actually, I have been told again that uh, this is the last uh, paper of this session. So thank you all uh, the speakers for their presentations and all the participants for participating uh, in the discussion. So now I hand over uh, the session uh, to the organizers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Krishna, for uh, chairing the afternoon session on semantics on the final day of ICT Plan A2. It has been a very productive session, and all of the presenters have contributed from diverse topics uh, related to semantics. So mm -hmm. thank you uh, to everyone here present here as participants, and thank you to the presenters once again, and thank you to our chairperson. Uh, there is just uh, one announcement that the next session will remain the same. There is no change um, as of now. If there's any change coming up, then we will inform you by mail in a while. So we will see you all at 3.30 p.m. for the next session on morphosyntax, which will be chaired by Professor Madhumita Borbora from Tispur University. And um, the presenters are requested to be there at least between 15 to 10 minutes before the session begins for the technical check. So see you in an hour. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, madam. Okay. See you again.